Hey and welcome to my second video for the Dungeons the Empire. My name is Michael and today I'm going to be showing you how to make snowcaps out of any basic mesh. So I've prepared a small little scene here. And what snowcaps are, uh, they are meshes that sit on top of your mesh where snow will be uh, in order for you to just put a mesh on there and then put a tileable on it. And that way if you're working on an environment that has a lot of snow, it gives a snow volume uh, and the nice smooth shaping that you'd expect from snow in the real world. So starting off, we've got a basic scene here. I've just split it off into separate elements and I've only uh, made the elements that I want selectable. So first things first, we need to be able to choose where we're going to place our snow caps. And obviously we want it to be on the top of all of these meshes. So I'm going to go into edit mode on this mesh and I'm going to do two things. I'm going to go to top view by hitting seven on the numpad. And then I'm going to select everything from top down. And you'll see that this isn't the best result because it's actually selecting some edges that we don't want. But for now, let's just duplicate this off. I'm going to lift it up on the Z for now, just so it's above everything. And I'm going to hit P and then go separate by selection. Now I'm going to go out of edit mode and then select the new mesh that we just made. And then hit tab to go into edit mode. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a face that has the direction that I really want. Uh, so top down, which the top of this chimney does. So if I select that face and then go Shift G and then choose by normal, and then you can tweak the uh, uh, the selection here. And that seems good enough for the selection. So these are the faces that we do want to make snow out of. So if I go Control I to select all the other faces, then hit X and then delete the faces here. Now we should have everything we need for making the snow caps. However, before we move ahead, I just want to do a little bit of cleanup because there's some faces that I can see that we don't want. Like the faces underneath here, we're not going to need these since the snow caps will be on top. So let's delete those. Uh, have a look anywhere else. Might not need all the faces on this, so let's grab those and delete those. And I think that's it. We're ready. So I'm just going to select everything again and then hit G and grab it on the Z and snap it back to its original position. And now we have the mesh that we're going to be making the snow out of. And so first thing really quick, just so I can separate this from the original mesh, is I'm just going to apply a new material. I've just got one set up that is a basic white material. And then secondly, I'm just going to go into edit mode. With everything selected, I'm going to hit E to extrude, and then hit Z to lock it on the Z axis, and then extrude up. And by doing this, this will control the volume of our snow. And now that we have the shaping all set, we don't have to worry because we can't go and change it again in the future by just selecting any face on top, go by normal, uh, maybe one that's more, uh, go by normal, and then now we can just change it again. There we go. So now how are we going to make this into snow caps? So the first thing we're going to do is go into our modifiers. And the first thing I'm going to do is apply a remesh modifier to this. And you see we're not getting the desired results right away. But first off, we can go remove disconnected pieces, which means that it'll do it to all the pieces, not just the largest pieces. And secondly, we want to uh, turn on smooth shading and then up our octree depths. And you can see we start getting more and more of the shaping back now. Now that's feeling more like what we want. If I go and show our wireframe that's being generated by the modifier, you can see it's nice and pretty sharp. Uh, it's got a decent amount of geometry for this, so what I'm going to do next is do a simple subdivide. Uh, only one uh, iteration of it, I guess. And then I'm going to collapse these. You can play around with the the depth of the uh, remesh modifier here, and that can change the result. The octree depth set to 8, but obviously this is also dependent on your hardware. You can see some of the snow isn't doing too great if I turn the octree depth up to 8. We start getting some artifacting, and that's just due to Blender's remesh modifier. It can be funny sometimes when you have a lot of small pieces intersecting with each other. So I think I'll keep it at 7 now. And next you can see that we're still getting a lot of jagged edges based off of the way that it creates the, uh, or it does the remesh effect on the mesh. So next I'm going to add a smooth modifier. And this is important before the next bit, because then it will uh, smooth out all of our vertices and vertex normals for the next part, which where we will be displacing the mesh. So I'm going to set the factor to two, and then you can see how many times you repeat this. So I can just set this to 10, maybe not 10, that's a bit too much, so let's go five. There you go, you see it's smoothing it out a bit more. 
And the next step, we're going to add a displace. And this is going to go a little bit crazy, but if you dial it back down to 0 0.2, you can see we start getting that smoothness that you get from snow when it billows over edges. Uh, let's actually go to like 0 0.12, and that feels better. And then again, uh, like I showed before, if you want to change the thickness of the snow caps, you can just select the top face, normal, and then do that. And then when you go back in, the snow will be thicker. Uh, I don't want that, so let's just bring that back down a bit. There you go, that's feeling perfect. And again, we don't actually want that face inside the middle there, so let's get rid of that because you don't want snow inside the chimney. That doesn't make sense. And again, I think that I probably could have deleted more. I don't know what's going on here. Ah, I still haven't. There we go. Now it's gone. So now you can see that there is snow, no snow inside the chimney. I'm not too sure of the accuracy of snow on top of the chimney, but I just like the look of it here. So I'm just going to keep it for now. Okay, so the next effect we want to do is I usually add another displace modifier. So if I go add modifiers and then displace, displace. And for this, I'm going to set it to 0 0.08. And for this one, I'm actually going to create a uh, noise uh, texture in order to change the offset. So if I now go to the noise texture, I'm going to change the type from image or movie, and then I'm going to set it to clouds. And immediately you can see we get some more natural shaping and billowing to the, uh, the, the snow here. So if I set this to something like 0 0.75 to get it to be a little bit larger, and this will make the next part easier where we're going to uh, one remesh and then two decimate. So now if I hide the wireframe quickly, you can see we've got some pretty good snow to work with, even though the, there's some cleanup that is needed. And I think that I have auto smooth on, so let me just turn that off so it's all smooth. There we go. So now for the next part, I'm going to just do what I just said before. I'm going to add another remesh. Uh, you don't have to add another remesh, but I find that this will just tie all of the, smoke pieces, uh, the snow pieces together. So if I go remove and then smooth shading, Set the type to smooth. And then again, play with the arc tree depth. You'll see the shapes start coming back in. And it can cause some issues depending on your geometry. And the way you can fix this is if there is an issue with your geometry, say, because these faces are too far apart, set the, the S, Y, and then zero since they're on the Y. And then same for these, so the gap between them isn't too much. And that should help fix any issues we have. You see it's fixed it there, but not here for some reason. So it's SY0. And then same again, SY0. And you can tell that this might actually be quite realistic, uh, depending on what is underneath this. But if you want to get rid of it, you have to be uh, play with it a little bit. I think by increasing the uh, first offset of the displace, we'll start filling that in a bit more, but you can see now some pieces are connecting together that, that I don't want. So the way that I've shown here, you can play with these a little bit right. to really get the effect that you want. And again, for this, I'm just gonna go to turn this to 0 0.1. And I think it might be the smooth that's doing this. So let's set this to two. And I can smooth after everything else. Now let's set this back to 0 0.6. There we go. Uh, we can ignore that for now and come back to that a little bit later. Maybe it's because of the octree depth. I can play around with that. It does seem to be directly correlated with the, the remesh modifier, which didn't do this. Uh, in all of the warm-ups, but it's doing it now. So if this happens for you, it's probably best that I tackle this now as an issue so you can see how I would tackle this. So you can try by changing the type. See if that does it. It does something, but it's it's not great. Uh, and in Blender 2.9 Alpha, there is a new remesh setting uh, that is the voxel remesher, which is much better than this one. So that might help a lot. For now, I think 
for this, maybe I will just leave doing the uh, second displace. No, it's happening in the first one. Okay, uh, remote three. Maybe if I just reduce the, nope, very, very weird. Up the octree depth again. Hopefully, oh, there we go. So now we're getting no more uh, issues in the snow. So now if I do a displace again, I can probably up the smooth as well, since we're getting some weirdness, uh, blockiness here. So now that I've fixed that by playing around with the octree depth and the the mode of the first remesh, I can go to the smooth and then I can turn this back up to five. There you go, we get a much smoother result at the end. Add that uh, that remesh back. There we go, uh, smooth shading. And then disable the remove to disconnected. And then let's play with the octree depth again until we get the result that we want. Again, we're getting some artifacting of where things are blending together here. And uh, these are a bit too far apart. So I'm just going to select those two faces and then S, Y, and then zero. And then same for these, S, Y, and zero. Sometimes you might actually want breaks in your snow. Uh, but since I, the best thing for snow caps is to have them nice and uniform to make them easier to deal with. That seemed to sort that. So now that that's sorted and I played around with the settings here, so the type to smooth. Now I'm just going to limit the scale of this display back to like 0 0.6 as I don't want to push things up enough where we'll start getting merging up here. So, oh, 0 0.06, sorry, you can see I broke it. 0 0.06. I'll wait for it to catch up, and there you go. Now we have some nice looking snow caps that have some good silhouette break up and follow the basic shapes of what's underneath them. Again, we have some not so great deforming here. So what I'd recommend is if you're doing snow caps, of course, you should uh, maybe do one snow cap set per fence and then one per log pile, and then one for the little shed overhang here and then one for uh, the door frame and then a separate one for the roof and chimney. Uh, that would also help with your scene for draw calls and uh, streaming in smaller meshes, essentially. For demonstration purposes, I'm just going to uh, let this be for now. Maybe just reducing the octree depth will help that. Now we've got some basic shaping here. We can go and decimate these down. So let's go here and then go decimate. So let me show the wireframe as well once the decimate's kicked in. Okay, so decimate's ready. So let's show the wireframe. It's pretty high poly. Uh, we could probably uh, play around with things a little bit more here. But we can now go to, we've got 16k tries uh, here, so it's sort of to 0 0.2. And then I'm also going to triangulate it, which will help with a lot of the uh, shading and mesh errors we can get later down the line. So let's hit triangulate, but it'll bring the face count up a little bit. And now we can go 0 0.1 if we wanted. You can see we're starting to get some weirdness at the wireframe of the logs. So what we can do especially if we wanted to bring this into engine, we can just separate these off, separate by selection, which is P by the way. So P separate by selection. And now this is separate. We can tweak these uh, displace values separately. So this is 0.2. Okay, so I've broken this part off here and I've started troubleshooting it. And I've tried a bunch of different things and none of them seem to be working. And the issue behind this seems to be the second remesh uh, having a lot of issues with the geometry not being so great. The newest version of Blender, Blender 2.9 Alpha, which you can download on the website, uh, does have a, a voxel remesher, which is uh, in the modifier. So it has a new remesh type that's called voxel, which is the new default which is much better at dealing with geometry like this. But let me show you another way you can deal with geometry like this that's giving you issues in a more destructive way. But again, we just need to make the snow caps. 
So let's go delete all the modifiers. I just want the the base geometry underneath. And then I'm going to come here to mesh and then under remesh, there's a new voxel setting. So I also want to smooth the normals, preserve volume, fix poles. So if I now voxel remesh this, you can see that it very quickly creates a voxelized mesh. So the geometry of this is a bit small, although this is probably good geometry to subdivide. So I'm going to undo that and then just turn this down to like 0 0.06. And then hit Vox Remesh again. And you can see it's a little bit more dense now. So now if we go back to the modifiers, this is our actual geometry now. We can do what we did before by subdividing this to smooth it out and then add a smooth, turning the factor of this up a little bit and then iterations could probably, uh, and then after the smooth, let's go and add a displace like before too strong, so let's go to 0 0.1. And we can play around with this as much as we want. But what I want to do now is add a, uh, let's turn up the smooth a bit more. And what we can do is also bring this down so it sits on the mesh. And then add a second displacement modifier and give it the, oh, not a new texture. You see it's causing a lot of issues there. So let's give it that clouds texture we already made here. So this is a bit too large. Again, as the, the effect is too large, it's too strong. So let's go to 0 0.2 or even 0 0.1. Much better. I think that's a much better uh, snow cap. It's not perfect, but for now, for demonstration purposes, and since it's going to be reduced so much, so let's do that now. This should be fine. So add a decimate. And since this is so low poly, I don't need to type anything in. I can just drag and control the resolution of this directly. So I can go pretty low with this. You can see 366. And this will be even less, which sadly the last part, I haven't really figured a way to do cleanup on these yet. Because uh, now that we actually have these as the mesh, so if I have this and I go control A and then visual geometry to mesh, and this is the mesh that you want to use as your snow cap and bring it into engine. So if I turn off the wireframe, you can see the strength and effect that snow caps have. But if you wanted to bring this into engine, you'd want to delete the back faces here. So let's just solo this. You'd want to make sure that you clean up and delete the back faces here and obviously put a, uh, do the UVs for this mesh and set it to the texture density of your project. And that way, whatever tileable snow you put on this in the engine, it'll look good and blend well with the, the snow in the rest of the game. And for things like this fence, if you're still having issues, you can always go to edit mode and say we want to pull these edges down to make this a little more realistic. And obviously the snow wouldn't clip through these, but they're so low poly that it doesn't matter anyway. Um, obviously you can be more or less precise. Uh, based off of what your workflow allows. So that's a quick look into doing semi-procedural snowcaps for meshes to bring into your game engine. I didn't take you all the way through to the, the polish up phase and getting them in, uh, since that's quite self-explanatory, but the way I showed you how to create very quick snowcaps inside of Blender 2.8, uh, I've used it in production too, and it's a very simple and quick process. And again, snow caps add a lot to your mesh since they actually add volume, not just uh, they're not just masked on a mesh. So, yep, that's all I got for you today. Thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful, and I hope I didn't go on too much of a tangent. And yeah, thanks.